Hello and happy Tuesday. I'm Sandy from uh, Lolly and Sand and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I am so happy you've joined me today because we're going to have so much fun with the Humming Along Bundle. <sighs> I believe, if I recall correctly, um, this is one of the sets that we got at um, on stage in Orlando and it gives you a great opportunity to do some coloring which would be uh, and today is the hummingbird itself yeah um where shall we start well I'll show you the stamps and I do want to tell you that they're cling stamps so they're they're stickier than other stamps and you know what I forgot to do is get a piece of paper out oh whisper white where do you hide here we go here we go I do hope my video is working because my computer screen isn't moving at all, which is quite odd. All right, so cling stamps were developed because of the uh, because there was um, complaints, let's call it, of the stamps not staying onto the blocks. So this is the hummingbird itself. And I do have the sticker on, and if you've watched my previous videos, you will know that I don't often um, put my stickers on. Now, one thing is, once you've put your stickers on, you have to be really careful peeling them off. You don't want to rip your stamp. So, you actually need to peel it carefully. It is really sticky. Like, it'll stick to my finger. That's how you know it's sticky. So, I will show you. Here's your stickers when you get your cling stamps and I'm doing this for you because I I found that I don't actually have to put the stickers on and I'm a non sticker kind of gal so so be it so um, peel off this little backing and at this point this is not sticky all right and leaving this on your sheet of stickers peel off the sticker part take your uh did I just do that backwards I think I did too oh it's on the other side dang <laughs> okay it's been a while um oh no it isn't oh I'm being a doorknob today okay so you've peeled off your sticker and what I do and I think it's there are some instructions in here is and you only get one chance at this by the way so to do this Directly, I need to pick it up go like so press it down and peel it up that is a cling stamp okay that was the lesson of the day I'm just gonna set that in there and move it aside so again we're going to be using the hummingbird and it comes with the 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 um, humming along bundle comes with a die cut to cut the hummingbird which is lovely um, also to cut the large flower, a sentiment, and that leaf I just showed you. This this piece is really cool because there's a couple different ways of, of doing this and I'm going to show you that in the video. So let us proceed. All right, so um, for this video I'm going to show you heat embossing. Now I'm not going to do the, the whole thing because, as you might have guessed, I have it already heat embossed. I know, I gave that one away, didn't I? <clears throat> so, and I'm going to be heat embossing in the black. Or showing you how it would be done. So when, when you are, how about I get my Versamark too? When you're going to heat emboss, you need to use your little embossing buddy. Okay, that takes the static off, so your embossing powder will only stick to the Versamark image and not everything else because you hate to put the work in and then find out that when you heat emboss you get little bits on your uh, on your uh, paper so large image and I know if you look at this um, don't make the mistake I did and the mistake was not closing my Versamark before um, I heat embossed and some of the little powders got on here so it doesn't it's not hurting anything 
so it's no biggie. Once you've used your embossing buddy, try to not put your fingers on the paper too much. Like, I know I can touch the corner or whatever. Um, and I'm going to go right here. I'm just going to hold it down. Let it let its sticky goodness take, take hold. Peel that off. Now, you don't see very much, and I don't see very much. I know I can see that you can just see like a little bit of the image, but... The magic happens when you put the embossing powder on. So again, this is black. I'm going to be coloring this, and that's why I'm using black. I, gold would have been really pretty too. I might try that for the next one. Alrighty, so I put the powder on and then did shake it off, but it didn't get everything. You definitely want to put something underneath when you do this, because you will get um, a colossal mess on your table and you want to keep that embossing powder. Okay, so you're going to turn it up and down, give it a few flicks, and voila. Now, I'm since I'm not really going to emboss that, I'm going to take this, pour it right back in, the leftovers. This paper, it is stuck, to, the, the embossing powder is stuck to it, so I, I won't actually be using that one again. I know it seems like a waste, but, you know, it's, um, it's just the way it is. So that was a paper that I'd already used. Just making sure I close this before I get too far. Okay, so there it is. You're gonna bring out your heat embosser and little crumblets. And about that far away, I don't like to get too close. And and ta-da, that's what you get. So you can see that it is um, shiny which gives us a really nice, if you're not, like for me, I'm not really good at coloring and that's why I've challenged myself to use the blends more often. Alrighty. Oh, I did want to mention that I do keep, or you're, you're gonna to want to keep your embossing buddy in uh, a bag of some sort because it is powdery and you don't want powdery in your craft supplies. Okay, so I was wrong. I was thinking that I did not have, um, more blends. I didn't think I'd, you know, I forget. I forget. That's the way it is. So go this way. So I have the dark and the light of the petal pink and I have the dark and the light of the smoky slate. I like to start with the light. Okay. Are you, an, are, are you into uh, heat embossing? I would love to know because if you have tips, I, I love hearing what other people do. Oh, remember with these, there's two ends, the bullet end and the brush tip. And I'm gonna use the brush tip. One thing I like about embossing is that it's less likely to have the color bleed outside, um, say, the ink. And if I was gonna ink this with the blends, you want to use Memento. Alrighty, so this is actually gonna be a really quick and easy coloring. Now, I am gonna leave a bit of light area. I'm using the dark one first. I don't even listen to myself, do I? Oh my goodness, you just grab the first one that's handy. Okay, so we're starting with the light one. I wondered why that looks so dark, but I can just go over that a little bit. It's no biggie. And again, a little bit of white area, just to give them a little depth. You can see how much lighter the light one is and why we would start with start uh, with the light. Just want to get into all these little nooks here. I can hear uh, Sterling outside the door going. Mm, 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 mm. He's like, "What are you doing in there, Sandy? And why can't I come in and bark and carry on?" Well, that would be because we're coloring today. I can go back and add just a little more. Now you do. Even though I've I've embossed, even though it's embossed with the shiny, the shiny black, you still want to um, um, take care. You don't necessarily you you're not. We're not trying to go outside the lines. Now normally going outside the lines isn't a big thing for me, but it is when we're coloring. A little bit more in there. <laughs> It's funny because Sterling's mama's home, my daughter's home, and uh, 
It's her dog, but he wants to come in here. He likes to root through my uh, paper that goes in the, uh, that gets recycled. Okay, so we're definitely starting with the light this time, and I can tell. I didn't read it, but I can tell because the cap is lighter. Alrighty, so um, I, this may not be what a, what, well, I'm pretty sure this is not what a uh, hummingbird, how a hummingbird looks, and that's okay because when you're the person doing the coloring, you get to do whatever you want. Ta-da! And I like that. Now, this inspiration actually came from, and I don't know who, um, at our team meeting, someone had done a, a card and done the um, the blends this way, and it wasn't someone on the team, it was from a swap that my uh, upline had been a part of, and she shared the cards with us, but I didn't get the name, so I would give credit where credit's due, I just don't know who they are. There. Okay, I may go over little bits again. And let's do the wings. I'll save the dark for last, like I said. The coloring is actually quite easy because I'm not terribly concerned about these lines. It definitely gives you confidence when you're when you've heat embossed something. Um alrighty, and then up here. Even if I went over into like the head area, let's say, or the top the top wing, I could still use the darker over top, so it wouldn't be a big deal if I had actually done the whole thing in the gray, the lighter of the, what did we say this was, smoky slate, smoky slate, yes, light smoky slate, all right, when we're done here, oh, and I don't want to forget, I have, oh, my goodness, I haven't mentioned that, I, of course, I have a draw winner from the prize patrol for people sharing my video last week, so I will get to that. I have to concentrate here. <laughs> Not a lot of it's it's really easy. You know? And lid and next and still this still this one. Now if I was had not embossed I might be uh, more apt to use the, the bullet end. So I had a lot of fun uh, over the weekend. The, the bright sunshine really did inspire me to do some coloring. And, uh, well, that's where we're at. Alright, almost done coloring, and then it needs to be die cut. There. Oh, wait, you know what? I wanted a little bit of highlight right along the edge here. on the uh, tail feathers. There we go. And you want to hear that click noise because you want to make sure that you have closed your go over just a little bit more. <clears throat> you closed your marker. Oh, I went outside the line. Dang it. That's what happens when you go speedy. But that's okay because I have a color lifter that will take that off. Okay, next step is to die cut. So, bring these guys back in. And so it's really simple. And now I use a magnetic plate. I'm not bringing my big shot in because you would have to know that I die cut it already. Alrighty. So there he is. And we can start assembling the card now. Yeehaw. So that's the fun part. Well, that was the fun part, actually. It's all fun. Oh, you know what? I have to do some remembering here. Um, I do want to show you how I store these. Okay, I keep my blends in the wider, I think they call these the wood cases, and we do, we do have these at Stampin' Up. And you want to store them flat. Do not store them standing up, because the ink will go down here and there won't be anything at this end. So you want to store them laying down flat. Okay, so this is a petal pink base that I've already cut, and you know that I will put the dimensions on the video afterward. So, just want to get a nice crisp edge so using the bone folder. Now, I don't happen to have the same paper as the person used um, in the, uh, the swap from my upline. So, I happen to find in my stash, this is paper from Twinkle Twinkle. 
and it is perfect for this. Excuse me, I have a bit, wee bit of a runny nose. Okay, now here's something I didn't know about this. This is this piece. Come here, you. Which I had die cut this way. What I didn't realize, and you'll see it on my other cards, is that this actually comes out. I did not know that. I did not know that. So it looks like a, um, I don't know, like a mesh, like you would probably see in, um, oh, what'd you call that? Like a camouflage kind of thing, but it is kind of cool. You can pull this out. Well, apparently I haven't done it because I wanted to do this on the video. Alrighty, just, I want to separate all these little bits so I don't pull anything and break it. Haha, -ha, found an end. It's kind of like a little puzzle, which means I love it because I love puzzles. I did puzzles all the time as a kid. Not so much now, especially with the dogs. Um, the little guy will eat anything. He found a piece of plastic and it looked like food, so he started eating it and I pulled it out of his mouth. Wrappers, everything. Well, he's a puppy too, and, and as you know, puppies like eat everything. There you go. So this is cool because you can see the the pattern behind. So let's start assembling. And first with the layer. So I am using the Tombow. As much as, you know, you could use this piece too. So I will keep that for another card. Um, Tombow gives you that wiggle room. Now this has been beside my computer again, so it's it's very warmed up and gushing out a whole lot more than I, ah. Oh, right, stop. Okay, let me be a little too close to the computer. You may have to just give that a weak clean. Stop. <laughs> stop. Oh, I've created a monster. Okay. Oh, let's hope that it doesn't gush out. Okay, I always start from the side that's open. I know that I made this a really narrow border. Um, just sheared off an eighth of an inch. I believe. And you'll see that in the, uh, again, later on. Alrighty, so for this, and it's still coming out. Apparently, not only did I, I squeezed too hard, apparently. So I, those little pieces that I took off of the, um, the stamp that I put on the, with the, with the sticker, I'm actually going to use that and just spread the ink, the ink, spread the glue around just a little bit. Is, I think that would be a good thing. And put a little bit on there too. Okay. Let's put that away. Gasp. No, oh, I did get, oh, there's glue here and there. Alrighty, any specific direction? I think I'll go this way. And right about mm, wiggle time. We're using our wiggle time. There. A little bit, the little bit of glue that I put in there should hold that down. It'll hold it down well, well enough. Alrighty, and dimensionals. We are getting there, and I am not going to forget the Prize Patrol winner. I will not forget. I am probably, I could use the mini dimensionals, but I don't want to reach over the camera to get them. So, there's no harm in cutting these in half. So, I want to support the wings for sure. And get close to the beak. It doesn't have to be right on the beak, but close enough to hold it. I found, um, I find that the, um, the coloring is very relaxing. It's kind of like, it's, and you take your time. Like for a video, obviously I'm gonna go a little faster than I would if I was just playing, but so be it. Um, what else? Oh, oh, I did I did I put my punch away? I think I did. Okay, I may have to reach over the camera because I'm looking at the punch and it's a butterfly punch and that's not the one I want. So let's just, everything I want, yeah, I did too, so my apologies. There we go. Everything I want is back here. So this is going to, might as well start down here. That saves the rest of the paper for something else. I believe this is the everyday label punch. If I'm wrong, well, I'll put it in the comments because sometimes I'm wrong. 
Alrighty, I did go ahead and use this stamp set, part of my story. It's it's actually, at first I was like, eh, I don't know. But then when I read the sentiments, it made sense. So what I have is, um, what they have is some really, one beautiful font and some really nice sentiments. Let's get together and giggle. That's cute. The world needs more people like you. Aw, I'm so glad you are part of my story. And the one we're using today, here's to those who inspire us and don't even know it. I don't know about you, but I do. I have people that inspire me in my life. And wow, what would you do without them? You know, that just, even just by being friends, just by being there, you know, being part of your family, basically, um, are inspiring. So I, I like that. Um, know that today a friend is thinking of you and you're my chosen family. I love the fonts and I love what they've done with these sentiments. So that's why I chose that one. Now th for this, if you can see these little dotted lines, I die cut that using the um, shaped framelits, sti no wait, stitched shapes framelits. Phew, say that fast 10 times. And this has stopped gushing. And I won't squeeze so hard. I'm stronger than I look. Oh, you know what? Now, I will show you from this side, the non-gluey side. Just the little bumps stick out just a little bit. So, But I wanted to use this to put a little extra color behind. So here's, the, here's what you're gonna do. Take your snips, just cut those ever so slightly. Oh, maybe not put it on the glue. And get that one off there. Okay, off to the recycle. All right, and then this can go on, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't show, but it's just a, just a little pop of color behind it, which I love. And bring in the dimensionals one more time. All right, I would love to know what you think of the card. Actually, cards, because you're going to see two others as well that I was working on on the weekend. And drum roll. We will do our, um, where would I like to put this first? Let's think. A little bit up there, a little bit down here. So if, you, if you're just joining me, you definitely want to start at the beginning and where I talk about the um, heat embossing. Anyway, this is, oh no, a naked card. We must put something on the inside. So when I cut this, I found that I had an extra little piece. And you know what I'm going to do with that because we like to put a little something on the inside of the card. Now, with this being um, the sentiment, I wanted to be able to write a nice message inside, so I'm not stamping anything. I know, gasp. I'm not stamping anything on the inside. There we go. Okay, so when you adhere something, let's go this way. I know it looks the same, but I see a rough edge. Um, this The way I do this is I don't play around with it and wonder. I hold my, my piece of paper straight up and down, then I can line that second little piece right up with my desk. Thus, you still have wiggle time left and right, and done. And it goes in the card. Simple, simple. Alrighty. So my prize patrols, I do them weekly. So every Tuesday I announce a winner, and that person will get something at the end of the month. That's when I do all my mailings. And the simple way of getting in on that, well, there's two ways, actually. One, share my videos. Well, I guess I could say three ways. One, share my videos, which is awesome. Whether you be on YouTube or on Facebook, share them. Uh, the other is to um, place an order. And the third way is to do both. Huh. I know, that sounds funny. All right, so here's the other cards. So in the same, it's kind of the same, but different. Now this is where I did not take this out and I, I really like the texture. So I wanted to leave that in. This is the die cut that I showed you from the, uh, from the amazing, not amazing, from the Humming Along bundle. And um, what I don't think you can see is, you know hummingbirds, I know that on their neck, or maybe right down, right down the front of them, there is a bit of sparkle to them. So shimmer, 
I'm not sure what they would really, what the correct word would be for a hummingbird. So I added some Winkostella. Now I didn't to this one because it's already got the, the uh, heat embossing on it. And this one, I went a little color crazy. Um, still the same thing. Now this is, this is Poppy Parade. This is on my blog today and I will put the, the blog post up so you can read how I did this one. It also has the Winkostella. I've also used um, some of the free celebration paper, which with a hummingbird I thought was perfect. I'm not going to blind you like I did on last week's video where it went all wonky because you could see the, the holographic bit. It was kind of funny actually to watch. But um, it, as I turn underneath here, you can, as I turn the card underneath, you can see that the, the color changes a wee bit. And I think that might be showing up on the video. I'm not sure. So yeah, this one's on my blog. But anyway, there they are. Do you have a preference? Um, light, light colors, the bold colors, or do you just like them all? Let me know. Um, I love when you comment because I will reply to every comment. And oh, prize patrol. I just looked over at my notes. Oh, good gracious. Um, the winner of last week's Pi Prize Patrol is Rosemary. So congratulations, Rosemary. I will be getting you your, your uh, prize. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to continue the week with the same um, bundle, the Humming Long bundle. And that's in the occasions. You probably know that already. And I would... Well, thank you, Kathy Jean. Um, I would... Uh, I'm going to do the flower on the Friday. I'll tell you that much, but I won't be showing you any samples. I will get those done. I haven't done any. Bad me. Alrighty, I will see you again Friday. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, and have a wonderful week. Alrighty, bye-bye.